in this tutorial we're going to talk about uh, observables. Now, observables are one of the sort of tricky things you'll come across when you're starting to learn Angular or Ionic and it's one of those, those things that seem tricky at the start but it's really quite simple at least at a basic level to use observables. Uh, observables themselves are quite complex and you can do uh, so many things with them but at a basic level of use they're quite easy to use. So observables, uh, they're not part of Angular uh, or Ionic directly, they're their own separate library. Uh, they're part of the RxJS library, uh, which is part of this whole bigger paradigm of programming, I guess, uh, called uh, ReactiveX here. It's about uh, reactive programming. And so that's a topic that I'm not going to cover in this video, and I don't uh, really plan on covering anytime soon. It's not even something that I'm across, uh, but I just wanted to get the point across that observables are kind of part of this whole bigger uh, idea. Uh, but we can use observables sort of independently in our Ionic applications or in Angular applications. So I think this little animation that I have up on the screen now is a really good uh, visual representation of what an observable is. And so an observable is similar to, say, uh, callbacks or promises uh, in that it allows you to uh, program asynchronously, that is, uh, to do something and have your application continue going on uh, without having to block and wait for a, a result. Uh, so say something like fetching data from a server. You don't want to block your application, have it wait until you get that data back. You want the application to continue working, doing other things, and then when that data comes back, uh, do something with it then. Uh, so it is similar to promises and especially promises uh, in that sense. One of the big differences about uh, an observable though is that it can emit multiple values over time. Uh, with a promise, you'll just have that promise resolve at some point once the data comes back and that's it. Uh, with an observable, you can subscribe to that and you can continue to get data over time. So uh, you can kind of think of it like a, a YouTube subscription to a channel. Uh, you might subscribe to my channel and then every time I post a video, uh, you'll get notified about that. Uh, you don't just get notified about my next video. So if we take a look at this uh, little animation here, this black line represents the observable and this black line down the bottom also represents an observable. And so what we can do with observables is we can apply these operations on them uh, that will then return back a new observable. Uh, so in this case, it's using a debounce, uh, which is a way to um, stop a, a function from firing so much. So if you have something like a search field where it auto looks up suggestions for the user as they're typing, you don't want to hit the server every time the user hits a, um, a key, you might want to wait a second before you actually launch that request. So in this example, we have time flowing from left to right, and each one of these little dots is the observable uh, emitting some data. So if we just focus on the top observable here, uh, as time goes on, we get this purple circle, it continues, we get the blue one, the green one, and another green one. So if we were subscribed to this observable, we would get notified four times. Uh, each time that it emits this data, our a uh, subscriber could do something with that. Uh, but in this case, we, we don't want uh, all of these to be emitted. We only want to, uh, say, receive data every two seconds or so, only the, the last thing to execute in that two seconds. So we first run it through this debounce uh, operation, which returns us a new observable that only emits the purple and that last green one there. So this all might seem a little bit abstract uh, at the moment. So I'm gonna jump into some examples and we'll, we'll take a look. So the first time you'll probably run into uh, an observable uh, if you're using Ionic is uh, through the HTTP service. So uh, that's supplied by uh, Angular. So if we import HTTP, we can make a HTTP uh, request. So we'll just have to inject that here. And then we might do something like this dot HTTP uh, dot uh, get to make a get request. And we'll send that to some uh, URL. I'm not actually going to do that here. And then, so this creates the observable. Uh, so in order to get the result from that, we would then subscribe to the uh, observable. And then when that observable emits some data, we could pass it in through this uh, handler here. 
and we can do something with it. Uh, but as you saw in that uh, observable animation I just showed you, we can also kind of modify that observable. And so what you might also see uh, with uh, HTTP requests is we often have this map operation in here. And so what this does is that in itself will return its own new observable, which we're then subscribing to. So this creates an observable, this creates a new observable from that, and then we subscribe to that. And so what the map uh, operator allows us to do is to modify the data coming in in some way. So typically what we do, uh, since we're usually getting a JSON response from the server, we'll take that response and we'll just map it uh, to uh, the same thing with uh, calling the JSON method in that response, which will convert it into a, a JavaScript object that we can use more easily. Uh, but you could have any number of operations in here. You could map it and then you could use that debounce in here as well. Uh, you could string uh, different operators. There's one called distinct until change that you can use. So if the, uh, the value doesn't change, the operation won't uh, execute. There is uh, tons and tons available, uh, which is why I said that observables are quite complex and you can do a lot with them, but at a basic level, they are quite easy to use. Uh, for most things you'll do, it'll be some simple format like this where you're just subscribing to the observable or maybe you map the response. So as well as using observables that um, Angular provides, like this uh, HTTP service, we can also create our own observables. Uh, so as you can see up here, I've imported observable from the RxJS library. And what I can do to create my own observable is I could do, uh, just create a variable here called my observable. And then it will uh, use the observable.create method. And what this does is it will allow us to create an observer. We'll pass that into this handler here. And so this we can use this observer to uh, trigger emitting data and performing whatever things we need to do with the observable. Uh, there's also other methods uh, besides emitting data, um, like indicating that the observable is complete or that there was an error. Uh, but we're just going to focus on emitting some simple data here. So what I could do is then say observer.next and we'll just emit some data, we'll say hello. And now what I can do is I can uh, subscribe to that observable. So if I were to do my observable dot subscribe and we'll pass in that data and I'll just log it out. So if we take a look at what's happening through the browser now, so I've actually got an error here because I'm importing HTTP from the wrong place. That should be from uh, the HTTP library. Uh, so I have to import that from Angular HTTP. So if I resave that now, hopefully that won't complain. We don't actually need this anymore, but I'll just check that that works. Okay, so there is gone now. Uh, and we can see, if you look in the console here, it says hello, uh, which is the data that our observable is admitting, uh, emitting, and then we're subscribing to it here and logging that data out. And so, as I mentioned, you can emit multiple values over time with an observer. So if I were to create an interval, which will allow me to run some function uh, every however long I want, uh, I'll just trigger that observer.next method again. And we'll just say hello again. And we'll run that every, say, one second. So if I save this again now, you can see we have the, the hello, the initial hello over in the console still. Uh, but now every second we're getting hello logged out to the console again. And so that'll just keep going uh, forever. Now one important thing about observables is that uh, they are lazy. And by lazy, that means that they don't execute uh, until they are subscribed to. So if I were to just comment out this section here, you might think that, well, we're not going to log out the data, but the stuff in here would still run. So if I were to say console.log uh, observer setup, you would think that, that this code would run to set this all up. It would log out observer setup, but we'd never get the hello being output uh, because we're no longer subscribing to that and we're not logging it out to the console. Uh, but if I save this and we take a look in the browser, uh, you'll see that nothing is being logged out. Uh, so not even this console log statement here. So observables won't, uh, won't run until they're actually subscribed to. So uh, you might run into an issue with this when, say, you're posting data with HTTP. Um, 
sometimes when you're posting data, you're not interested in the response. So you just want to send some data to a server and that's it. Uh, but if you don't subscribe to that observable, uh, then that post will never even be run. Um, so if you are sending a post request, you need to make sure to still subscribe to the observable. I'm just going to show you one uh, last thing here, and that is uh, subjects. Uh, so subjects are kind of like a um, an observable with an observer wrapped into one. So if you take a look at this, you can see we create the observable, uh, and then we get this observer object, which we can use to uh, trigger the next method to emit the data. But I guess sometimes this might be a little bit more compl uh, complex than what you need. So uh, a subject kind of makes that a little bit easier to do. Uh, so what we can do is we can create a subject in a similar way. We can do uh, we'll create a variable. So we'll create one called uh, my subject and we'll make that equal a new subject. And then we can subscribe to that subject just like we do uh, a normal observable. So I'll do my subject dot subscribe. And again, we'll pass in any data that's being emitted and we'll log that out. Uh, so now all I need to do to trigger uh, that observable to emit data is I can just call the subject, uh, call the next method on the subject, and then just pass in the data that I want. And that should trigger this and it'll log out the data. And I actually want to log out the data variable, not a string. We'll save that and we'll take a look at what happens now. And you can see we're still getting that hello uh, value output to the console. And so we could do that same thing we did before where we set, uh, create a set interval which runs every second to keep triggering the next method on this subject and that would keep logging out data. Uh, so this, uh, this may be a more, uh, an easier alternative to use if you're creating a, an observable sort of setup and you, you just need like a simple Im implementation like this, it may be easier uh, than using that whole observable observer uh, pattern. So this has just been a very high level basic introduction to observables. Uh, as I mentioned, there is uh, way more to observables. There's so much you can do with them and reactive programming in general is this huge topic, uh, but the basics I've covered here will be enough for you to um, build Ionic 2 applications. Uh, unless you're getting into some more advanced stuff, you probably won't need to worry about creating your own observables or anything like that. Mostly you'll just have to use um, the HTTP service to launch some um, requests or maybe you're using an Ionic native plugin that returns an observable that you can subscribe to uh, but for the most part it'll just be you have some observable you'll subscribe to it and you'll do something with the data that that's sending through okay so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one